Hello, and here we are. It is time for our discussion group on Rise of the False Gods, finding our transformation through illumination. And I'm so glad you're with me. Um, it, it's been kind of a rough night. If you, uh, it is December 22nd. I don't know when you'll be seeing this, but as of this moment, December 22nd, um, it, there was just news on that was very disturbing about uh, Trump pardoning 20, uh, well, he pardoned 15 and, and uh, commuted the sentences of 20 criminals. Um, it is contrary to what the pardon power is used for, and it is very unsettling as he goes through some of the very insane moves uh, as he leaves office. Um, so it fits in very much with the creative process, which is what we're looking at tonight. And at the end of the class, uh, I will go to that part. But for right now, I would actually like to ask that we begin this session with prayer because I am weary of the gut punches we receive every day because of the um, out of line politics we are experiencing. How can we relate politics? and spirituality. See, they're all based on right ideas, but they're not always right expressions. And that's what we've been talking about is the upper and lower consciousness. So tonight, based on the, uh, the heaviness of my heart, because of what we experienced today, I would like to ask you to join me in a brief prayer. So we're going to take a couple of deep breaths because when we take deep breaths, as I've shared before, we can't think. Our brain gets a rest. I'm going to invite you to take two deep breaths with me, nice and low and long and slow, and then we'll pray. And so we pray. Whatever the day it is, December 22nd, now with me this moment, or any day through the days, through the years, we affirm that no matter what the outer appearances are, God is at work. That God's will for us is good and only good. And God's will is being done now. And let us commit in this moment to living in accordance with spiritual principle, to stand firm on our beliefs. Over and over, we're reminded in scripture of the importance of standing strong and firm and aligned with God, with all that is good. And we do that now. And we lift up our minds. We lift up our hearts. And we affirm that in truth, there is only one presence and one power in the universe, in our lives. And yes, dear God, in the government, which is sorting out its stuff so it can come to a higher place. And we affirm this in the name and the nature of Christ. And so it is. Amen. Thank you for praying with me. You know, sometimes we just need others to pray with us and get us through difficult times. Oh, did she realize what we're doing? And she said, hey, Nana, here I am. I'm going to tilt that a little bit because we were out of line there. And, uh, we are ready. We're starting today. Remember, I welcome comments and questions. Also, that um, I may not see your questions, but I would answer them later. 
and you can go to YouTube and get all of the previous videos there. I'm a little behind because I've run into some snags in posting them. It's like putting a puzzle together. I got out of whack and I got to get back in, but I'm doing it and I expect to be maybe done tonight. So, all righty. Well, we are beginning where we left off yesterday. Um, and the last thing we had said is that we were driving to work and someone cuts in front of us and asking ourselves, how do we handle it? Did you have a chance to look today at how you handle those instances, those moments of perhaps anger or judgment or rage, and the importance of taking that breath, breathing, getting recentered, and reminding yourself, God is in charge. No matter what, this is happening for a higher good. We've talked about before uh, pains and the sim pains being symptoms of uh, dis-ease or something that is out of alignment that we want to bring into alignment with spirit, with truth. And sometimes we have to have upheaval before we can build a new foundation. I'm going to get to that at the end of tonight's uh, session. Okay, so let me see. I made a note to myself, but I have to be able to read it. Oh, okay. I wanted to go back to, I want to talk about reality a little bit. Reality little r, reality big r. Reality big r is that which absolutely is. Reality, little r, is that which is appears and can be changed. It's a part of our day-to-day -day thinking and feeling process that we move through. And there's a lot of people that are saying that the United States is not really that much different from other countries in, you know, COVID, that we are not all that much worse than the others. Well, I follow the statistics. Not because I've got a sense of dread or fear, but because I am grounded in finding um, those numbers going down. I look to see them go down. I'm looking for the the success, just like, um, I think it was it Nehemiah that was praying for the cloud, and then there was a cloud the size of a fist, of a man's fist, and he prayed and prayed for rain. And then he got rain. So let us keep praying for, you know, the, the riddance of COVID. Uh, and we can help. Whether some people believe it or not, we can help. And we have to know that God's in, at God's in charge and working with us despite anyone who isn't. But I wanted to, uh, this was like from two or three days ago, I made these notes and didn't get to uh, bring them to you. But um, I want to compare uh, the United States, our COVID statistics, with those from India. In, uh, at this point in time, uh, the United States had 18 million cases of uh, COVID. Um, India had 10 million. So we are 8 million cases ahead of India. We have had 321,000 deaths. India has had 145,000 deaths. Okay. Now here's where it gets really eye opening. The population of the United States is 331,907,000. 437 people, give or take a few thousand as they are coming and going all day, uh, all, you know, <laughs> every day. Um, on the other hand, the population of India is 1,386,308,397. The cases began to show up in both countries at a relatively similar time. What I'm trying to share here 
is that it is our freedom without responsibility that has led to us being the infamous world leader in COVID disaster, COVID tragedy, with a government where its leadership still denies, fights masks, and calls it hoaxes. And so I, that's just one of the things. See, that's the ultimate thing about not wanting to get real, not wanting to align with truth, okay? So, okay, I'm going to hop off of that bandwagon right now. So, and Tissue wants me to go to bed, but I'm not going. All right. So we're talking about changing our habits. This is why I'm reading from page 138. This is why it's very important to develop a practice of daily prayer, taking time to bring your mind to a higher state of being. It's difficult at first, but it becomes easier and more enjoyable. And you will find peace that you're not going to find if you remain on the lower consciousness being chewed up around and around. Okay. Uh, you know, a lot of times um, I, I have had uh, four children, three pregnancies. So one of them was twins. And most of the time, I really did not prepare for childbirth. Oh, I got the bottles and the, all that kind of stuff that you need, um, you know, to have a baby. Uh, I don't know, the clothes, the cribs, the, you know, all the paraphernalia. But as far as the preparation for the birth, I did little. Back in those days, the, it was just the barely beginning of the Lamaze method. And having your husband in the delivery room was not done. Now, shoot, just about anybody can come in. Well, not during COVID. But, but the thing is, we were not prepared for uh, some very, very hard work. And I think because we weren't prepared, it was more difficult. When we do our spiritual work, we practice spiritual principles, praying, working with our mind, and disciplining ourselves and our thoughts to drag us out when we are caught short in fear, in, in stress, in a temptation, whatever. The, the spiritual practice, and it's not, you know, I know in the beginning, it seems like I got so many things to do. I haven't got time to do this sit down and pray thing. I mean, I got, you know, people to see, things to do, places to go. Well, no more places to go right now, so, and no people to see. So you got time for your prayer and meditation. It can be squeaked out anywhere. You can take as much time. But this is critical to the creative process because the creative process happens in mind. It's through our mind consciously connecting with divine mind, the source of all ideas, and then manifesting those ideas, which we are going to manifest one way or the other for better or worse based on our current state of consciousness. We want to be in our right mind, right? I do. Okay. So prayer and meditation is kind of like going to the spiritual gym, except in the beginning when you go to the gym and you hurt, and you gripe and you moan, and then later it gets to be good and, and you feel really good and you want to push yourself harder. Only with prayer and meditation, you want to relax and release more. What a wonderful balance. That's why I stay as committed to my morning jazzercise workout as I do my morning prayer time. And sometimes I've got to kind of like really, really focus so I can make sure I don't leave anything out. I want to be healthy physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, and it all works together for good. On the collective level, this is very difficult because it's like trying to 
uh, you know, we're, we're in this consciousness that we live in, which is filled with news and uh, human-based action, temptation, sensuality, um, error thought. And it's, it's really, uh, how do we shift a whole consciousness? Well, we have to remember, we're not in it alone. So on the one hand, we can't do it all. But on the other hand, we can and are responsible for doing that which is ours to do. And it can start with prayer and meditation for guidance and then doing as you are guided. Okay. Um, so it's difficult on the collective level because many people hold a common error thought. For example, in a magic show, the audience, which in that case would be the collective, may believe an elephant just disappeared. Now, it may look like an elephant disappeared, and the people may think an elephant disappeared, but that's what illusion and magic is all about. But we don't want to live in illusion. We want to live in illumination. So magic is fun if you can watch it and go, isn't that amazing? But when we start to say, I want to make elephants disappear. Well, I think you'd have to be a lot more spiritually involved than anybody on the planet to be able to do that. But to try to convince the audience that it was just an illusion is not always easy. Here's the thing. Because of our ego, nobody wants to be wrong. Everybody wants to be right. To be wrong is a slam to your ego, and it threatens your very base desire to be accepted and loved. So if someone is, is God, saying you're wrong, well, that must threaten the fact that you're worthy and, and loved and, and appealing, right? No. That's human thinking. I just can't wait for everybody to get to the point where they can joyfully celebrate who they are and love who they are, where they are, as they strive to be even better and to not base their life on what someone else thinks. What somebody else thinks of you is none of your business. What God thinks of you and what you think of yourself that's what's really important, that you are aligned with all that is good. Okay. The principle works the same. Therefore, error thoughts become error causes and will manifest error effects. This is where our work lies. The uh, the thing with um, with the elephant disappearing is it's a form of uh, cognitive dissonance where you know the ele an elephant can't just disappear, but an elephant just disappeared. And rather than try to figure out how they made that elephant disappear or how where it is now is um, harder than just saying, oh, they made the elephant disappear. You know, we kind of want what we want. We see things that are not there. Uh, I had a friend who was convinced that just about any man that drew breath wanted her. <laughs> and she would say that sometimes. She would say, you that guy over there? Like, yeah, he wants me. Listen, not everybody in the world wants you, okay? That's a little bit more on the ego side than the uh, self-love. It's more to narcissism than self-love. Anyway, um, so as I opened today's uh, gathering, um, talking and asking for prayer, when I wrote this book, I had no idea things could get this bad. 
I had no idea. But you know how many times I've talked about the cosmic two by four? that we will experience a whack on the back of the head or something happen in our life. It could be an illness. It could be a financial challenge. It could be anything. That's the cosmic two by four. It's, hey, wake up, something's out of whack. And we got those over the past five years, over and over. And what happens if you don't get that cosmic whack on the back of the head saying something's wrong? And then look for what's wrong and fix it. If you don't fix it, that two by four is going to be a four by eight is going to be an eight by 16. It's going to get bigger and bigger. And over this time, nothing has been done. Band-aids have been put on a bullet wound. No, nope. band-aids won't fix bullet wounds. And we have got a huge gaping wound in our uh, life as Americans and our democracy right now, exacerbated to uh, levels that I never thought possible. Here's the thing. Cosmic two by four. We didn't fix it earlier, so it's getting bigger and it's getting bigger and it's going to continue to get bigger. One thing that helps to get through these times is to realize we are not alone. There are far more awakened people than not awakened people. But the awakened people must do what they can to bring things right. It doesn't have to be a thing where you um, you have to confront someone or something. At the very, very base least, pray, meditate, ask for guidance. Do that which is yours to do. We're each here to do something else. Do what is yours to do to bring about the change that we need. One of the most important parts of that is become enlightened, spiritually enlightened, and become informed. Uh, you know, read, uh, if you had, you know, watch what you have to of the news to get an idea of what's going on and then verify it. That does not take that long. When you have an opportunity to vote, vote. When you have an opportunity to speak your truth, speak your truth, but know what the heck you're talking about. Because a lot of people that talk a lot don't know what they're talking about. You have to be grounded in what you know. You have to trust God completely for right outcomes and move forward accordingly. My affirmation that is keeping me going during these challenging times, I've shared it with you before and I'm going to share it with you again. For this I was born, for this I have come into the world. And what you are being called to as you pray and meditate, you will know. I believe for this I was born, for writing this book, for sharing with you as I am, for this I was born. No, I did not come up with this stuff myself. I It's stuff that I learned and that I tried out and that I found out worked. Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, said that what we want is a religion that demonstrates. And I promise you, if you strive to learn, to live, and to share these principles you will find that it is demonstrating in your life and in your greater community. And we work together to create a world that works for all. Okay. A dark sky lights up with billions of stars. Did you see the big conjunction last night, the Christmas star? 
Oh, aren't people hanging on that for hope? For hope of the coming. Now a lot of people are waiting for Jesus to appear in the cloud. But I keep reminding myself and others. Jesus said, follow me. He said, these things I do and even greater things shall you do. If you believe. And we have to build sometimes a bigger believing. It's okay. We get grounded. Back to the sky with the billions of stars. Um, it's even greater. The collective mind. Uh, da, 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 da. Likewise, the collective mind shines with the spiritual light of kindred spirits who also aspire to co-creating a world of all good. It's even greater than that, since all is one with the mind of God. We start by cultivating a circle of positive, enlightened friends. If we want to experience positive outcomes if you want to experience positive outcomes establish a circle of positive friends you don't want to be fighting and arguing with people who don't see things the way you do when you can have a civil and peaceful conversation fine if you can't don't go there remember the story about the native american grandfather who talked to his grandson about there's there's two wolves fighting in your door. They're fighting inside of you. One is for good and one is for evil. And the grandson said, which one will win? And the grandfather said, the one you feed. I'm not feeding those wolves. I'm sorry. I have to focus on what feeds my spirit and the connection I have to like-minded others. We don't be cruel and shun and shut out others. Oh, we may block them on Facebook if, if we find that they're spreading toxic, uh, what do you call those, conspiracy theories. We shut that down. And we keep moving forward. And we stay strong, reminding ourselves, for this I was born. For this I have come into the world. I'm going to be a healer. I'm going to help people to expand their mind. And to for me, I want to help people transform their lives through illumination, through spiritual understanding of principles that are beyond what we see in our day-to-day -day lives. We can do it. And if we, as we get friends, remember when we were talking about, about the idea, nucleating energy, drawing like-minded energy to it. Yes. Yes, that's what it's about. As you speak your truth in a conversation, someone else hears and they're drawn and someone else is drawn and someone else is drawn. If you post a positive meme on your Facebook thing and someone sees it and comments, it, slowly you gather, you nucleate groups of people and there's groups of people nucleating everywhere. And we have to enlighten enough in our own hearts and souls, illuminate and, and get our mind and our heart aligned with spiritual principle and right ways of living and being and truth and justice and living that despite whatever is going on around you. Stay committed to that and to each other. And as we shed our light, as others get into greater pain and loss, they will seek out our light. And you know when someone comes to you and asks you a question that God has sent them. I got a very unexpected text this afternoon uh, from someone who I was in my life decades ago asking for prayer. I didn't even know that person ever even, my, I even crossed their mind. 
but they needed prayer and boy was I there to pray with them. That's the way it's going to be. But you got to stay strong and grounded and you got to keep learning and living and sharing the principles so you will be ready. Go to that spiritual gym. The gym's a pleasant place to be. You know, like a lot of gyms have little juice bars. <laughs> my my gym, my spiritual gym, my, my prayer place where I pray is like spiritual coffee bar. Have my daily cup of coffee and a nice coffee clutch with God and my inner self and Jesus. And anyone else who shows up. Okay. Um, all right. The oh, there was a there was a, a song uh, in the Catholic Church. What I what I can't remember. I think it was um, the mass is over, and in it it says something along the lines of. Um, that that God, the light, must increase, and I, my smaller self, my personal personal self, personality, must decrease. And within each one of us, the light must increase. That's how we get enlightened and help to enlighten others. The light is shared. You know, in those candlelight services, when one candle lights another candle, lights another candle, right? That's how we enlighten the world one at a time. Oh, I'm running over. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to hurry through it. Um, okay. Uh, we can expect we may not get the immediate result we want. We didn't get in this mess overnight, whatever the mess is, whether it's your financial mess, your marriage, your uh, relationship with your children, your family, your boss, your work, whatever. Didn't happen overnight. It's not going to be undone overnight. Now, Paul did say, you shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. But once you're changed, you're awakened. Then you have to work on being enlightened. Okay. We can't let the fact that what we are wanting to happen hasn't happened yet dissuade us in any way from our path. If we do that, we're going to set off a negative creative process. Let it go. It helps to try to always speak our truth with love and not blame or fault. This is all about principle. It's not personal. The minute we make it personal, we are in trouble. Even if we unfriend or block someone, I had to, I think I said it the other day, I had to unfriend and block a friend of mine that uh, I, I knew from Great elementary school. I don't know how long we knew each other. It seemed like forever, but I had to let it go because it went down a very bad road and I didn't want to, I did not want to participate in that. I did not choose to, to have that come into my consciousness. I chose not to feed that wolf and I very lovingly let go. I left the door open saying, well, if you ever decide to, you know, not spread this stuff and not, you know, and to enlighten yourself, well, you know where I am. Okay, um, we want to, uh, to uplift the collective consciousness to establish relationships with real or perceived adversaries. You know, a lot of our adversaries are perceived. We think we know what they're thinking or we think uh, we put words in their mouths and thoughts in their mind and misinterpret what they say. In truth, we are more alike than not. So whether your adversary is a boss or, you know, let's not talk politics for five minutes. Let's talk day-to-day -day life. There's just someone that dan tap dances on your last nerve. You don't have to become buddies with them. You be polite. You understand. Leave the door open and let God do the rest. Uh, we may find that as we get to know this person that was our adversary, uh, that we can share our way of thinking safely. And we may find we think, you know, more alike than we originally thought there is a possibility the adverse energy between ourselves or a group is such that it's not healthy to be around them. In that case, we release them with love. Okay. And now, um, 
Now I want to talk about uh, <clears throat> a little bit about what happened today um, with the uh, all the people, the, all the uh, people that were had gone through court, had been accused. The process, the pardon process, was abused. It's supposed to uh, be like like looked at by the Department of Justice, all these things, but our Department of Justice is currently um, crippled. So uh, we have to, first of all, stand on truth and know that God is going to bring this about right. We have to hold right thoughts and think, uh, uh, do right actions, pray and meditate, stay grounded, don't let the, don't let the, um, evil behaviors get to you because God is greater. So we ask ourselves, I think sometimes, um, and uh, I hope you don't take this wrong, but if I can't talk to you straight, then I can't talk to you. Um, so I'm talking to you straight. Let's say, and nobody is saying this, okay? So I am alone in saying this. Let's say the worst happened and somehow things got overturned. Well, what's going to ha what would happen is when you build your house, you you know, on a on a foundation of sand, we've talked about it, um it cannot stand because there is no strength um in in the foundation. Uh if you try to run a government full of criminals, bad things are gonna happen. It's gonna be uncomfortable for everybody, but it might shake a few people who are sitting on the fence to decide they better stand up and act on something. But we have to act in new ways. We have to behave in new ways. But the bottom line is anything that is built on a foundation of of sand, a a castle of cards on a on a foundation of sand. It's not going to take much to make it come down. And the fall will be great. And we can either be a part of the problem or a part of the solution. I choose to be part of the solution. Now, I never would have had this conversation with you five years ago because I really, truly thought that we couldn't possibly get into this kind of a spot. Now, that doesn't challenge my faith or my relationship with God. It actually proves the principle that the thoughts we hold in mind manifest after their kind. That if we are not enlightened and engaged in our government, <coughs> excuse me, um, it, it'll run off the rails. It's what happens. It'll come back. I don't know how long it'll take. How long will it take? It'll take as long as it takes for people to wake up, live the principles, understand that we are all one. We are interdependent. We are mutually accountable and collectively responsible. And that's how we will make the change. So don't let what I don't don't let those fears get to you. Let's first of all engage our faith in knowing that there is one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives god the good omnipotent know that we find transformation through enlightenment and illumination so please continue to study with me as we go through the book and to pray and meditate and find other sources of spiritual upliftment and, you know, enlightenment. Participate as you can in your government because we're all in this together. I hope I didn't scare the pants off you. If I did, put them back on, pull them up, pull up your big boy, big girl pants, and let's move into a positive future. You know, it doesn't matter if Trump decides to veto that that uh bill the stim stimulus the, the relief bill if he decides that he's going to uh veto it then he can't stop us from giving to each other that's the way our body works if one part's hurting the rest of the body through the nervous system sends help 
to that part that's hurting to help it heal. We can be healed. We will be healed through spiritual principle. It's principle, not personal. It's metaphysics. It's not magic. God bless you. I hope I see you tomorrow night. Bye.